Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Touch your neighbor and say, God's moving tonight in your life. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. God is good tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Got some good reports from Korea today. Praise God. Demons coming out of people. People getting healed, getting out of wheelchairs. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I got a full day today, so we'll see what happens. I said all that in the first session. Imagine that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good. How many are blessed tonight? Three people blessed in here. How many of you are blessed in here tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1 tonight. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child. And bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Somebody say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Which is translated God with us. God's name means that he will always be with us. And when God is with us, that means that devils can't be. Come on, somebody. It means sickness can't be. It means powers that are unseen can't stay. They got to go. When Jesus is with us, everything that is contrary to the kingdom has to leave. When Jesus was birthed into the earth, he came in as Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is ever sustaining, always providing, never runs out, has more than enough, too much, an overflow to distribute upon each and every person. When you're with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God because He's with us. Come on, somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, he's with you tonight. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter how your mind is lying to you because God is with you. And if God is with you, then no one can be against you. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says that if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for us and God is with us, that means that nothing else can stand in our way. I wish somebody would get a hold of this tonight and believe it with all their heart that there isn't one thing that the enemy can do to you that God hasn't already provided an answer for in the mighty name of Jesus because when Jesus' name is put on display, demons have to go, sickness has to leave, devils have to be brought down by the power of the Most High God because he's Emmanuel, God with us. Religion will tell us that God is with us sometimes. Devils will tell you that he's with you when the demonic oppression is not there. When darkness is there, the spirits will tell you that God isn't with you. But the devil's a liar. Touch your neighbor and say, the devil... Is a, liar. is a liar. The Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter what we feel like. Man, I wish I had somebody in here. 
tonight that would be unreligious and actually hear what I'm saying to you tonight, that would get a hold of the fullness of God living on the inside of you and begin to recognize that Emmanuel is with you even now to do miracles, to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, Hallelujah, to live righteously, to live sin free, sickness free, devil oppression free. Come on, somebody. I wish I had at least three believers in here tonight that believe what I'm saying, would believe the word of God above their circumstance, above their situation, above what the devil's been saying. If God's with you, you can't live in poverty, you can't go hungry. As long as Emmanuel is in your house. Hallelujah. 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 Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. I, sit, I feel so full tonight. Somebody needs to draw a circle around themselves tonight and say, as long as Emmanuel is with me, I'm going to have revival. I'm going to have a move of God. I don't care if somebody came to check it out tonight. Hallelujah. I checked out Calvary 2,000 years ago, and I saw him crucified. I saw him resurrected after three days. I believe his word. I'm going to draw a circle around myself and have revival, have a move of God. If the Bible says, by his stripes I'm healed, I believe his word. Hallelujah. I'm going to freak some devils out tonight. I'm going to have a personal revival. Touch your neighbor, so I'm going to have a personal revival. You can get in my circle or get out. But you ain't going to stop my praise tonight. Are you a fanatic, Brother Charlie? Yes. If that means I believe the word of God. If the Bible said it, I can have it. I believe it, and that settles it. The Bible says that Emmanuel is with me. That means revival is with me. That means the move of God is with me. When I move, God moves. Where I go, God goes. Where I feel, I don't even have to feel it because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. You yeah, say, well, what? Do you feel it? Oh, I feel it tonight. I woke up this morning feeling it. I'm going to go to bed feeling it. I'm going to wake up the next day feeling it. Are you on fire, Brother Charlie? Yes. Because Emmanuel is fire. He said he baptized me with fire. He said he'd give me the Holy Ghost, and then he would, put, he would just put the kerosene on it and then light the match. That means if I'm dead, it's my own fault. If I'm religious, it's my own fault. Because Jesus has already provided 
everything and he's already made provision and he's already promised that he would send the Holy Ghost and he sent it 2,000 years ago. And the Holy Ghost ain't never left. There may may have been a season of the dark ages, but I promise you that there was always somebody that was burning the midnight oil on fire. I wish I had at least three people in here tonight. That would be like Finney and say, I'm going to set myself on fire so people will come and watch me burn. Bible says that Emmanuel, God is with us. Don't matter how skinny you are, how fat you are, how good looking you are, how ugly you are, how short you are, how tall you are, color your skin, where you came from. Gray hairs, black hairs, don't matter. He's with you. He's the door. He's been knocking and saying, let me in. For some Christians, he's been knocking and saying, let me out. Touch your neighbor and say, knock, knock. Let him in or out, but open the door. I pray you get so drunk tonight that you get a Holy Ghost fit, that you start dancing like David danced, and you upset some folk that want to sit on the sideline and pretend that it's the end time. And that we're just waiting until the day when Jesus splits the sky. Listen, let me tell you something. The sky already split when Jesus was baptized. And he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Matthew 28, verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spoke unto them and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you, even until the end of the age. That means it don't matter what time it is. It's always revival time. It doesn't matter what age we find ourselves in, what dispensation we find ourselves in. Jesus said, I'm going to be with you even till the end, until this body has no breath in it. Jesus is going to be breathing and manifesting through and through. Well, you don't know my situation. No, you just don't know my Jesus. Because he's with me. Touch your neighbor and say, he's with me. He said, I'm with you always. It's in red. It means Jesus said it. Jesus can't lie. He said, I command you the things that I've commanded, and I'm all with you. Always. Somebody say always. You know, I looked up the Greek word. Always. Guess what it means. 
always. If you're taking notes tonight, write down the word always. It means always. Touch your neighbor and say, he's with me all the time. Oh. He's with you all the time. He's with you all the time. Every moment. The end of the age. Or one translation says the end of the world. But, he, but the word in, in the Greek there is that cosmos, meaning the universe, is aeons. Which means every successive moment in human history. There was somebody that had God with them. There's somebody in every age, in every moment in human history, every period of time, every moment that has transpired throughout human history, the word age here means unbroken moment. When Jesus is with you, you'll never have a broken time. Because he's the Prince of Peace. The Bible says that he's Jehovah Shalom. Which Shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. If you have something broken tonight, you have something missing, it's time to open up. To Emmanuel. Maybe there's been a moment in your life that caused a fracture, a shattering, a demonic uh, entity entered and began to take control, began to force you to do what you didn't do before. To cripple you, to paralyze you, to put you in a place where you feel confined, restricted. Even in a place of imprisonment. But it's in those places where Emmanuel will show up. And when he begins to show up, the prison doors go open. The oppression has to leave. The demons have to go. At the name of Jesus Christ, situations change. Broken situations get mended. They get put back together again. Jesus said this to the disciples. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, you can go and make disciples of all nations. You can go into all the world and be what I called you to be. You can do what I did. You can do what God does. He said all authority, all, the Greek word is exousia. All authority 
is given to me both in heaven and in earth. And he said, go. And I'm going to be with you. So when you go, he's going to be with you. And the same authority that Jesus has is the same authority that shows up when I show up. Because he said all authority has been given to him in heaven and in earth. Anywhere that the soles of your feet go, whether it's the ends of the earth or it's down to the Walmart in Wilkesboro, all authority to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to drive out darkness has been given to you and I. There's not one authority that's above the name of Jesus Christ because he said all authority has been given to me. That means it doesn't matter what its name is. It doesn't matter what the doctor called it. It doesn't matter what what the Spirit's name is. It has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus because he said "I, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm Emmanuel. I'm with you. And even after you're gone, he remains. Bible says occupy until he comes. Touch your neighbor and say, you got all authority. Mark 16. Verse 15, this is Jesus speaking. Notice that Matthew said, I've given you all authority. I'm going to be with you even till the end. Jesus said in in Mark 16, 15, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes and is baptized will be saved. But he that does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In other words, notice this. Jesus said, I'm going to be with you to the end. And you know that Jesus is with you because signs and wonders will follow you. Signs is the word Simeon, which means supernatural authority that causes manifestations to manifest at the message that is ministered. You will always get the results of the message that you minister. Well, Brother Charlie, I've never seen miracles. I've never seen signs and wonders. Well, what is the message that you're ministering through your life? Because it's not the lack of God being with you. It's the lack of believing what he is capable of doing. Jesus said, if you believe all things are possible. We'll quote that scripture, but do we believe what he said? These signs are going to follow those that believe. 
if I don't, if 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 I'm not believing, it's not a result of God's lack of power. It's my lack of belief in the supernatural. It's my lack of actually believing what he said. Because he said, all authority has been given unto me. Go. The amount of revelation that you possess in the understanding that you have and possess of the authority of God will determine upon the manifestation that you begin to see. Some people go to revivals. Other people are revivals. There's nothing wrong with going to get it. I'll go anywhere where it's at. If God is there, I'm going to go there and I'm going to get it. But I promise you that when I come back, I'm going to carry it. It's quiet in this Methodist church tonight. I must have went somewhere else. First Corinthians chapter 6. I'm almost done tonight. First Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 15, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who joins is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So, what we have to ask ourselves is what have we joined ourselves to? Let me break it down. The Bible says that the spirit of Babylon is the is actually a harlot. So Babylon is the spirit of the world. And although we're in the world, we're not a part of it. But when we begin to connect ourselves to the thought process and the systems of this world, and we begin to marginalize the gospel and power of Emmanuel, we attach ourselves to that harlot, and we are therefore one spirit with it. But when we disassociate ourselves from that spirit, and we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, this word is the unadulterated, uncompromised word of the most high God and we refuse to waver in the area of believing what God can do we cut ourselves off from that spirit that tries to cripple tries to dismember and tries to bring destruction to our spiritual walk. And we are connected and become one spirit with Christ and therefore are empowered to move into the fullness 
of the promise of Jesus Christ in our personal life. But any area that we have yielded, that we have given over to anything that is contrary to the Word of God, we have now become one with it. That means that I, I can partner with poverty. Even though God has the wealth, and the Bible says that the wealth is laid up for the righteous. Come on, somebody. Well, that hasn't been my... That hasn't been my experience, Brother Charlie. I've always lacked. I've always had need. That doesn't change what God's Word says. That means I have to change my belief. And I have to change the way that I think and separate myself from that spirit because it wants to cause destruction. Spirits of pain may have been through your body for your entire walk with the Lord. But that doesn't negate the word of God. That doesn't change what God's word says. Concerning the issue. It doesn't change what the Lord says. Concerning the supernatural power of the Most High God in your life. It doesn't change that. But I can change my mindset. I can, I can align myself to the Word. I may for a season only see 30 fold or 60 fold. But finally, the devil is going to fold. And I'm going to begin to see a hundredfold. Doesn't matter how my body feels. Hallelujah. It matters what the Word of God says. It matters what the Word says. We don't have to be crippled. We don't have to be disgusted. We don't have to be busted. We don't have to be destroyed. God has made for us Emmanuel. He put his son on a cross, and he was among us. He died for us. He resurrected for us, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. And the Bible says that we're seated with him in heavenly places, and that we've been given signs and wonders to walk in to go into all the world and preach the power of Jesus Christ. And because we are joined to the Lord, we are one spirit with him. And that spirit has never been defeated. Jesus Christ has an undefeated record. He's the champion of the universe. He holds all the belts. The devil came with every lie and every scheme, and the Lord knocked him out. And has the belt of truth, and it ain't ever came off. And when we join ourselves to the Lord, that means we are champions, undefeated. I'm a champion because of what Jesus did. I'm victorious because of what Christ did. I'm victorious because he was the one that was in the ring. I just got to watch. Watch. 
I just got him. Wa- wa- I just watched him defeat the devil. That means the devil don't got no feet no more. So why are you letting him walk in your life? The devil's been disarmed. So why are you letting him touch you? Come on, somebody. I'm not talking to anybody in here tonight. I'm talking to you that's watching online. Jesus stretched out his hands on the cross and bled every drop of blood. Why would you allow the enemy to stretch out his hand to try to bring some kind of affliction on you? Tonight's the night to take authority over it. Tonight's the night to put the devil underneath your feet. Tonight's the night to lift up your voice, to shout a shout of victory, to say, to hell with the devil and yes to heaven. Tonight's the night. To dance on the devil's head. The Bible says that we will dance upon scorpions. The Bible says that we'll trample upon serpents. It doesn't matter what the name of the devil is. It's still going to get stomped tonight by the power of the Most High God. I wish I had at least three people in here that were ready to put a stomping on the devil, to put their feet to work. Some people only worship with their hands. Sometimes you got to worship with your feet. Say, what are they doing, Brother Charlie? They're realizing that they got the victory already. feel something in here right now. (sighs) Something's shifting in your life tonight. Somebody's getting a spring in their step. Somebody's going to run into victory in this season.
Catch it tonight. Catch it tonight. Catch it tonight. Hey! 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 I got a new Bible. Because the other one was too small. I saw Brother Steve's Bible the other day. I said, that Bible's big enough to choke a camel. I said, I better get me a big one like that. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1.
Matthew chapter 1. If you're just joining us tonight, we're just getting started. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. The prophet said, look, a virgin's going to be with the child, and they're going to bear, bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us. God told the prophet, he said the child's name is going to be God with them. He could have said, name the kid. Jehovah Rapha, because God's our healer. But that's not what God said. He could have said, call the child Shalom, because God's peace. But that's not what he said. He could have said, call him Jehovah's Sick Canoe. God is our righteousness. But that's not what he said. He said, call the kid God. And that God is with them. In other words, every part of the nature, the attributes, the promises of God wrapped up in one child. The incarnated word. That if God found someone that needed him, that it didn't even matter if the thing that they needed was created because his name is creator. But not that just God was creator, but that God was everything that could possibly be needed in the life of any individual. He would become that very thing. 
And so God, in this moment, through the prophet Isaiah, made a declaration to not single out a portion of God's name. But said that the very word of God would become incarnated and dwell among men. And His name is going to be everything you need. I want you to get this tonight. That not only is God every, has everything that you need, but everything that you need is with you right now. And it's encapsulated in the Son of God. And Paul said that this is a mystery that has been hidden from ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Or Emmanuel in you, the hope of glory. The glory of God. dwelling with you, the glory of God living with you, the glory of the Lord, the cloud, the fire, the smoke, the hand of God, the foot of the Lord. The Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, with you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Emmanuel with you. God with you. He said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. There's an unlimited supply living in you tonight. Glory, glory, glory. Can I take you one more place tonight? Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at various times, in various manners, in ways, spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. And through whom also he has made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. In various times, in various seasons, in different moments, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. 
But in this age, he's spoken to us through his son. In other words, God's language is son. Everything that he spoke to the prophets was a promise. Everything that he is now speaking is a manifestation. And everything in your world is held together by the Son. And when he sat down at the right, ma- at the, uh, 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 he sat down and pr- after he purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Notice this. He sat down and he never got up. He never got worried as if his authority could ever be put into another contest. In that he is upholding all things by his word. And through whom he also made the worlds. Can I tell you something tonight? The word worlds there is the word aeons. It's the same word that Jesus told his disciples that they would go into all the world and that he would be with them until the end of the world. The same word, worlds, that Jesus said, I'm going to be with them until the very end of the age, is the same word that he said he is contained and appointed All things through him that made those very ages and those very moments. And he is holding them together by the brightness of his power, the expressed image of his person. He's holding those together by his word. What is his word? Emmanuel. God's word is is holding together your world. And His Word is not just a promise, but it's a manifestation. And that Word is not up for debate. It's not up for another fight. It's settled in heaven. And the Bible says that he's been given all authority, both in heaven and in earth. His word is not only settled in heaven, it's settled on the earth. But is it settled in your heart tonight? Somebody say last days. days. So if we're in the last days, then the only 
word that the Lord is speaking is the word of victory. Because in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Those that believe will be saved. Those that do not will be condemned. Those that believe shall manifest signs to them that believe. Say, that's me. Signs will follow. Why? Because the Son has spoken. And because I believe, I can trust that my world will never fall apart. But that I will be a sign and a wonder. Because Emmanuel is with me. There may be tragedy going on all around the world. But it won't come near me. It won't come near my family. It won't come near my marriage. It won't come near my body. It won't come near my children. It won't come near my finances. It won't come near me because Emmanuel is with me. And he's with me even to the end of the age. And because he created the worlds and he framed up this age. By his word, he has the ultimate authority that as I walk through these moments in human history, I will never fail to see the fire and power of God. And I never have to live a day without the power and presence of Jesus. I never have to live a day without the glory of God. I never have to live a day in lack or despair. I never have to live a single day without feeling the presence of God. I never have to go a single moment in my life without the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't, I don't have to chase it because he's with me. If he's not with you, get him tonight. But he's, if he's with you, then you can celebrate in the fact that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And every lie of the enemy is going to be condemned. Because it doesn't matter what they say. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? If God is with me, who can stop me? If I know the Son, and the Son has set me free, then I can be assured in this hour that I can step out on his word and I will not sink. That when I step out of the boat in the midst of the storm, I don't have to look to the right or to the left to wonder if he's going to come through for me. That he is a miracle worker. That I am full of God. And because I'm full of God, I can walk on his word. And because I'm full of God, I can speak his word. And as I speak his word, I can begin to step out on his word. I can begin to go to where he's called me to go. And when I speak, the words don't fall to the ground. But they create the world that I can walk into. And people will say, how is it that everything works out for you? Well, that's because I live in the world of God. I don't live in the world that is full of the devil. I may be in this world, but I'm not a part of it. I'm living in another existence. I'm living in another universe. I'm living in another place. I may walk on this planet, but I'm not of this earth. I'm of the world of God. I'm full of God because Emmanuel is with me. And because he's with me, I can speak his word and I can get his results. Tonight I decree and declare that God is lengthening your days. You will live and not die. You will declare the works of the Lord. You will not lack. You will live in abundance. You will be blessed. 
every form of wickedness that has been sent to you is broken in the name of Jesus. Every foul devil that has attempted to separate you from the love of God is broken tonight by the power of the Most High God. Emmanuel, God with you. Lift up your hands tonight.